The Catholic Men's Podcast, Episode 5. Reading the 40 Dreams of St. John Bosco. God spoke to Don Bosco in dreams. Who would ignore dreaming of dreams, which the prophet Joel counts among the gifts that were to gladden by a generous effusion of the Holy Spirit the latter days, that is, as St. Peter explains, the days of the Messiahs. Don Bosco's hearers gathered more than 150 dreams. Some of Don Bosco's dreams are prophetic, others are pedagogical, and some are parables. Most of Don Bosco's dreams are certainly supernatural events. Here are some proofs. Number one. Sometimes he said that it was a dream in which one can know what one does, can hear what is said, and can ask and answer questions. This does not happen in ordinary dreams. Two, he usually had a guide and interpreter. Who was he? Sometimes Dominic Savio or Louis Cole or an angel or St. Francis de Sales or someone else. Their explanations are always precise and instructive. This does not happen in usual dreams. Three, often he saw the secret things of conscience and the test proved it always to be true. The foreseen future of events, including deaths, did actually occur. This, Don Bosco considered, an extraordinary grace granted for the benefit of all the children of the oratory. 4. Don Bosco used to narrate his dreams with a very great spirit of humility, thinking only of the spiritual benefit of his hearers. The good effects were evident, especially a greater horror for sin, better confessions, general confessions, and more frequent confessions. It was, as he sometimes put it, the devil's bankruptcy. 5. In natural dreams, there is no logical order. All the opposite happens in the dreams of Don Bosco. Images and words are so well connected that one seems to hear things seen with open eyes. 6. Don Bosco's dreams contained clear and exact revelation of events to come. As many prophecies as he had made of all kinds of things came about before or after his death. 7. On the 17th of February, 1871, Don Bosco candidly told some Salesians that these things are certainly singular and must be spoken of only among ourselves in the Salesian house. Because if they were told to anyone outside, these people would certainly dub them as fables. But we have always this as our norm, that when something turns out to the good of our souls, it certainly comes from God, not from Satan. And now the dream for today. 8. Deadly Nooses I dreamed that I walked out of my room and instantly found myself in church. It was packed, full with the pupils of the oratory, Lanza and Mirabello, as well as many youngsters unknown to me. The boys were not praying aloud, but seemed to be preparing for confession. I observed a very large number crowding around my confessional beneath the pulpit and I began to wonder how I could possibly hear them all. I suspected that I might be dreaming. To make sure I was awake, I clapped my hands and distinctly heard the noise they made. To be sure beyond question, I stretched out my hands and felt the wall behind my confessional. With no room for doubt, I said to myself, I might as well start. And so I began hearing confessions. Soon, concerned about the number of boys, I got up to see if there were any other confessors, but there were none, so I made for the sacristy, hoping to find help. It was then that I noticed that some boys had a noose around their necks, which nearly choked them. What is that rope for? I asked. Take it off. In reply, they just stared at me. You, I said to a youngster, go to that boy and slip that noose off his neck. The boy went but came back, saying, I can't get it off. Someone's holding it. Come and see ugly cats. I scrutinized that huge crowd of boys more closely and thought I saw two very long horns jutting out from behind many of them. I got closer to the one nearest me and, drawing up behind him, I saw a hideous cat tightly clinging to the noose. Surprised in the act, it tried to crouch lower and hide its snout between his paws. I asked the boy and the others their names, but they did not answer. I questioned that frightful beast but it only crouched lower. Go to the sacristy and ask Father Malone for the holy water, I directed one of the boys. 
He soon returned with it, but meanwhile I discovered that behind each boy crouched a cat as hideous as the first. I continued to hope that it was a dream. Seizing the sprinkler, I turned to one of those large cats. Tell me who you are, I ordered. Alternately opening and closing its jaws, the hideous animal broke into a growl and prepared to lunge. Answer me, I insisted. What are you doing here? I do not fear your rage. Do you see this holy water? I will thoroughly soak you with it. In dismay, the monster began to writhe in unbelievable contortions and again seemed ready to leap at me. I kept my eye on it and noticed that it was holding several nooses in its paw. What are you doing here? I asked again, while threatening it with the holy water. The monster then relaxed its taut position in order to run away. Stop, I demanded. You stay right here. Look then, it growled and showed me its nooses. What are they? What do you mean? I asked. Don't you understand? I roped these boys into making bad confessions. With these nooses, I drag nine-tenths of mankind into hell. Then in the name of Jesus Christ, speak. Writhing hideously, the monster answered, With the first noose, I make the boys conceal their sins in confession. And with the second, I make them confess without true sorrow. And with the third, I won't tell you. You had better tell or you'll be drenched with this holy water. No, no, I will not. I've talked too much already. And it growled in fury. Tell me so that I can inform the directors of our schools, I demanded, raising the sprinkler. Flames and even a few drops of blood darted from the beast's eyes as it grudgingly muttered, With the third noose, I keep them from making a firm resolution and carrying out their confessor's advice. You hideous beast, I exclaimed. I wanted to question the monster further and force it to tell how I could remedy this great evil and offset its diabolical efforts. But all those hideous cats, which until now had done their utmost to stay hidden, began to mutter and then broke out into loud shouts against the one which had spoken. Amid the general uproar, I realized that I could get nothing more from the monster. Therefore, lifting the sprinkler and flinging holy water upon the one who had spoken, I commanded, Go away! And it disappeared. Then I sprinkled holy water all about, and in the pandemonium which ensued, all those cats scurried away. The din awakened me, and I found myself in bed. My dear boys, I would never have thought that so many of you had nooses around your necks. You know what they stand for. The first noose shames a boy into concealing sins in confession, or lying about the number of times. For instance, accusing himself of committing a sin three or four times when it was exactly four times. This is just as insincere as concealing sins. The second stands for lack of sorrow, and the third for lack of a firm resolution. If we are to rid ourselves of these nooses and wrench them from the devil's clutches, let us confess all our sins and be truly sorry for them. Shortly before flying into a rage, the monster told me, See how much good boys draw from confession. If you want to know whether or not I hold them in leash, see if they are becoming better. I also forced the devil to tell me why he was crouching behind your backs. So that I can't be seen, it replied. That way it is easier for me to drag them down to hell. Those of you who had those monsters behind their backs were far more numerous than I would have believed. Make what you will of this dream but it is a fact that I did check on these things and found that what I had dreamed was quite true. Let us therefore take advantage of this opportunity of gaining a plenary indulgence by making a good confession and communion. Let us do our utmost to free ourselves of the devil's nooses. I will remember you all in my Holy Mass next Sunday. Well, I hope you benefited from the lesson behind that dream. I plan on reading all 40 dreams because I don't know about y'all, but every time I read one of these dreams, it seems to really help my spiritual life. If you want to hear all the other dreams, don't forget to subscribe. God bless.